Hey Pretty Girl Club, welcome to part two of how being pretty is like being a celebrity. So when I talk about how being pretty is like being a celebrity, I'm thinking about how when it comes to celebrities, we scrutinize them, we live vicariously through them, we call out their flaws, we call out any beauty enhancements or plastic surgeries they've had, we give them harsher criticism, and we expect them to be perfect in every area. We are usually shocked when their relationships end. And I've noticed that a lot of these behaviors that we exhibit with celebrities, these are similar behaviors that people exhibit when they are dealing with a quote unquote pretty per person. Um, if you haven't watched part one of this series, definitely watch part one of this video. But being pretty is like being a celebrity on a very small scale. So for example, let's say you are the pretty girl in the office. Well, now you are the quote unquote celebrity of the office. So do you know what people are going to do? They're going to scapegoat you. Anytime an error is made, they are going to blame you even if you didn't even commit that error. They're going to call you out uh, based on your flaws when it comes to your work ethic, even though other people in the office have flaws. They may even try to get you on the dress code, even if the way you're dressing is not really inappropriate. I've heard so many girls who are considered quote unquote attractive or girls who have pretty bodies being scrutinized when it comes to the way that they dress in the workplace. So for example, Let's say there's some 60 year old overweight unattractive woman who wears skirts to work or maybe she wears very short skirts and dresses and nobody cares. But when you wear a dress or a skirt and it's not even short, you get called out or written up for it. You know why? Because your body is the pretty one and so you naturally have a spotlight on you. Being pretty is like walking around with a spotlight on you. Now sure, there are different levels to this. Uh, some people are pretty celebrities, some people are pretty in their local community, some people are the pretty girl in the office, some people are the pretty girl in their family. Maybe you are the pretty sister, or maybe you're considered the pretty sister. I noticed this dynamic when I used to watch the, the Braxton show with uh, Tamar and Tony Braxton, I noticed that Tamar and Tony in particular were treated differently by the other sisters and they were treated differently by their own parents and by the people around them because for whatever reason, those two were considered the pretty sisters or kind of like the bigger stars. And I noticed that people almost equated their stardom to the way that they looked. When in reality, both of those women were just talented. I'm not saying that they're not pretty because they are, but I'm using this as an example because maybe in your own family, you were considered the pretty one. Maybe some people in your family associate being mixed race or they associate your skin tone or your body shape or your hair texture with beauty. And so because of that, even if you don't consider yourself to be the most beautiful because they associate your beauty with your hair texture, then they now put that spotlight on you. And so now they make comments about your hair texture. Why don't you do your hair? Why don't you slick your hair down? You got good hair. Why don't you do that? If I had your hair texture, I would be flipping my hair in everybody's face. Oh my God, you don't know how to do hair. Have you ever noticed how if you are considered pretty, people suddenly make comments on your hair and makeup? Well, that is a subconscious sign that that person views your hair as being pretty and they view your, your face as being pretty to the point where they are exhibiting the normal qualities that we exhibit when we look up to a celebrity or when we idolize them or pedestalize them. We think, you know, why did Beyonce have those bangs? Why did that person have that hairstyle? If I were her, if I were as pretty as her, if I were as famous as her, as rich as her, X, Y, Z, I would do this hairstyle. And I've noticed these same behaviors on a smaller scale when it comes to the way that you treat a person that is considered pretty privileged. Because like I said, it's like being a real life Barbie doll. What do you do with the Barbie doll? You try to control it, you control the way it looks, you change up its looks, and so people will treat you like you were some sort of doll. And also, because you're considered pretty, people are more shocked and they're more surprised if you have anything about you that's not perfect. They're more shocked and surprised if you go through a breakup. They're surprised if you don't get the modeling gig, if you don't win the pageant, if you don't become a multimillionaire instantly, they are shocked and surprised because they, on a subconscious level, they associate beauty with success. On a subconscious level, a lot of people associate beauty with genetic su success. In fact, I've even heard people say, I want mixed babies. I want babies with good hair. I want babies with such and such eye color. I want my babies to be tall and athletic. 
I want to have sons that have the body type where they can play football. I've heard people make comments like that because they associate those things with having a more privileged life, with genetic success. They associate those things with basically having everything easier or living life on easy mode. On this channel, I've also talked about the MLS whore uh, complex where a lot of people are quick to call a pretty woman a whore. Why do they do that? Well, actually, whores are, are considered successful. Women who are quote-unquote hoes and thoughts, they tend to be considered successful because they can easily get money off of their bodies. You know, all you have to do is post a picture or, you know, make a video of yourself doing certain things, and then you can get money. And this actually makes men mad who feel like they themselves cannot get that type of attention. And so this is why we even see men who will go out and cheat on their beautiful, successful wives and stuff like that because those men are doing that as a humbling tactic. And that's another thing that happens when you are considered pretty. A lot of people will naturally try to humble you or scrutinize you. And again, we do this to celebrities. So because the celebrity is already above us or we see them as above us, like, oh, maybe they look better or they're richer or they're more famous, or their life seems easier, now we want to scrutinize them or demolish them as much as we possibly can because they're already above me, right? So that's already triggering. Beauty triggers an emotional response in people. This is not just true for being a pretty person. This is true for everything, like a beautiful landscape. If you look at beautiful mountains, if you look at a beach, if you look at pretty flowers, it actually triggers an emotional response in the brain. So depending on how developed or underdeveloped that person's mindset is, some people will react negatively to your beauty. So yes, they will call you names like being a hoe or a thought, or I've heard of some women being called promiscuous when they are literal children, because a lot of people, they associate beauty with being sexually desirable. And so because they see that little girl and how she's naturally pretty, they can't help but to over-sexualize her. Another thing that I've noticed is infantilization. So you know how we react to babies? Like, oh my God, they're so cute. They're so adorable. Oh, I want to squeeze their cheeks. We, we naturally view them as like, you know, they're like a baby in a way. They're our baby. They're so young. They're innocent. They're, you know, not very smart. They don't know how to do anything on their own. That's how babies are, right? They're very dependent on others. You have to teach a baby everything. You have to change its diaper. And I've noticed that a lot of people actually infantilize pretty people. So let's say you have youthful beauty. You have youthful features. Maybe you have round cheeks. Maybe you have round doe eyes and qualities that are, that are associated with babies. Very smooth skin. Maybe you have a uh, kind of a soft baby hair texture. So some people will infantilize you in the workplace. So that's not gonna work very well if you are an accountant, for example, or let's say you want to be a high level C-suite executive, and then you've got men or older women infantilizing you, thinking that you're too dumb to do the job, thinking that you are not smart enough to be able to learn anything. As a matter of fact, that whole dumb and pretty stereotype I personally believe that this on a subconscious level is based on how we infantilize beauty. We associate beauty with babies or with being very youthful and just not being able to do anything. And so if you see a grown adult who is considered beautiful, then we associate it with those same qualities. And some of you guys may be thinking like, why would someone pay so much attention to me? Well, this is because not only does beauty naturally capture attention, but a lot of times if a person doesn't want to pay attention to themselves or they feel like their own lives are boring or their own looks are boring or their own background is boring, then they will naturally latch on to someone who is capturing their attention and they will become obsessed with it. Paying attention to someone else or scrutinizing another person's flaws or gossiping about someone else, that is much easier than paying attention to your own boring, unfulfilling life. And again, we see this behavior with everyday people and celebrities, how we obsess over them. We're like worried about what they're doing, what they're wearing, how much money do they have, who are they sleeping with, what are they... What are they posting on social media? I've noticed the same thing on a smaller scale with the quote unquote pretty girl. Why is your boyfriend's ex stalking you? Why is your friend from high school still stalking you online? Well, that's because their lives are so uninteresting and you are the local celebrity without even realizing it. You were the high school prom queen or the pretty girl in school or, you know, you are the 
the girl that got chosen. So a lot of the women who are obsessed with the male gaze, yes, of course, they're going to focus on women who capture the male gaze. And they may scrutinize those women and say, oh, well, you know, she has a fake butt anyway. She has, she has fake hair. She has pimples anyway. Oh, she's mediocre. They're doing that because those women have centered men. They've centered the male gaze. And so anyone that is getting the male gaze, they will become obsessed with you because you are the celebrity in the eyes of males. And don't even get me started on how a lot of men react to a pretty woman when it comes to, let's say you're at the gym or you're in the workplace or you're in a situation where that man is obsessed with beauty. So a lot of men naturally just don't have the same beauty as women, obviously, because women have beauty enhancements. We have makeup, we have like hair extensions and stuff. And because that is looked down upon when it comes to men using those things, a lot of women in comparison to men on average just look so much better. And so for a man who does not have any sense of beauty or attractiveness himself, he views beauty as a prize or as something to be attained. And so a lot of men, they will constantly be chasing after a girl who is pretty or beautiful or her body is beautiful or whatever, because we all know that people heavily pedestalize beauty, no matter what kind of beauty it is, a beautiful car, a beautiful body, a beautiful beach, a beautiful mountain, a beautiful landscape. People will travel to the ends of the world to view something beautiful. People travel all over the world just so they can look at pretty water. You're traveling all over the world so you can go to Hawaii so you can look at the beautiful beaches of Hawaii. So beauty actually makes the world go round. And this is why I say that if you're a human who has pretty privilege, you are, you have a form of social power right there. And so now you get to decide what to do with it. So some women will use the, that social power to attract a marriage. They will use that social power to attract, you know, a lot of followers on Instagram. They'll use that social power to attract a job or, you know, whatever they want. And so this is why I say, Use your beauty wisely and definitely don't waste it on something or someone that you feel is not worth it. But also you have to be very aware of the caveats that come with being beautiful. So yes, people will scrutinize you more. You will be treated just like a celebrity in a way on a smaller scale, but you'll be treated like a celebrity, meaning you are put under a microscope. Everything you do and say gets noticed and very exaggerated to the point where Let's say you're in a bad mood or you're feeling sick that day, and so you're more quiet than normal and you don't smile. Well, your behaviors are now going to be exaggerated by others and people will now say that you have an attitude or that you're stuck up. Let's say you're extroverted. People are going to exaggerate that and say that you're trying to seduce a man or that you are being overly sexual or that you're slutty. And then let's say you're an introverted, beautiful person. Now suddenly you are a snob and like you don't speak to nobody and you are walking past people because you think you better than others. Everything gets exaggerated. Notice how if a person is considered ugly or repulsive or average at best, you don't notice what they're doing. You don't notice what they're wearing. You don't notice how they're talking to others. They have to do something extreme. This is why we see a lot of quote unquote unattractive people taking these extreme measures and extreme behaviors so that they can attract attention because they see the celebrity level of attention that a quote unquote pretty girl gets. And this is why a lot of women will go out of their way to attain more beauty. By the way, I don't think it's a bad thing. If you want to be beautiful, I think that's your choice. You can either choose to have pretty privilege, um, increase it as much as you want, or you can choose to opt out of it because there are some women who they do just want to be invisible and they don't really want the male gaze or they don't want the scrutiny that comes with their beauty. Then there are other women who only want a certain level of beauty. They, they just want the natural beauty and the attention that comes with that. So they want to be the pretty everyday girl next door. And then there are other women who want to push that pretty privilege as much as they can. They will get surgeries if they have to. They will maybe turn it sexual if they have to. They want all types of attention so that they can maybe make a living for themselves or you know, provide for their children or so that they don't have to get married. I've noticed some women doing this because they're like, Hey, I don't think it's a good idea to just depend on the male gaze or spend my whole life just trying to use my beauty so I can get married to a man and be cooped up in the house. So you know what? Let me go on Instagram. Let me go on XYZ social media. Let me use my money or use my beauty to attain money. And then I'll start my own makeup line like Rihanna. I'll start my own hair extension line or my own lingerie line so that I can make the money so that I can opt out of, you know, simply being thought of as beautiful by XYZ guy. 
Another thing that I've noticed is that beauty trends do change and that new standards of beauty are always developing. So for example, back in the day, it used to be very popular to ride on a chariot with a nice horse. It used to be very popular back in the day to have a big, beautiful farm. And now, decades later, it's very popular to go visit a beautiful city with tall, beautiful buildings and skyscrapers. That standard of beauty didn't exist. 150 years ago, we didn't have a whole bunch of tall skyscrapers. We had nice cathedrals and coliseums, but the beauty standards changed. The beauty infrastructure changed. And it's not to say that people can't enjoy the coliseums or that people can't enjoy riding on a horse and chariot, but now we have both the horse and chariot and we have Ferraris and Lamborghinis. So they both exhibit forms of beauty, but just a different type. And so I would say that one of the downsides of beauty and pretty privilege is that if you just stick to one form of beauty, or if you are constantly chasing different forms of beauty, then it's kind of like spinning your wheels because, you know, there's always going to be some new beauty standard being formed. And that's across the board. That's not just for humans. I've noticed that pattern with buildings, with infrastructure, with cities, with you know, what's the hot vacation spot? It used to be going to a five-star hotel. Now it's going to a fancy Airbnb, you know? So there's, there's always a new trend, uh, popping up. And so you just have to decide like, how far do I want to take this? Do I want to just embrace this natural look that I have now? Do I want to be able to be versatile and kind of follow the trends or do I want to set the trends? So one thing that I've noticed in the colorism community or the black women empowerment space is that a lot of women who are dark skinned and unambiguous, they want to set the trend and you can set the beauty trend and, you know, make yourself into the beauty standard. It's just harder. Obviously it's very difficult to be a pioneer and not every unambiguous black woman wants to do that. Not every unambiguous black woman wants to have to explain why her hair is 4C and you know, why her skin looks the way it looks and why she's doing all these things. And not everyone wants to be a pioneer. So there's nothing wrong with wanting to either change yourself to fit the trend, or, you know, maybe you just want to embrace what you have. You just have to decide what's best for you. I don't look down on anybody and the choices that they make on this channel. So the question is, do you feel like you fit your standard of beauty? Do you have pretty privilege? If so, do you like the good and the bad that comes with it? Are the pros worth the cons? And if you do not like what comes with it, are you willing to give it up? Do you have certain limits when it comes to the pretty privilege that you're using? So for example, with me, um, there are certain qualities about myself where it's like, okay, I don't feel like that's the best quality. So for example, sometimes my hair might get a little bit frizzy, but am I willing to completely shave all of my hair off and permanently wear wigs? Well, no, because I feel like personally, simply having shiny hair via a wig 24 seven, that may not make me um, very satisfied, but for someone that does make them feel satisfied, like Doja Cat, she shaved her head and she wears wigs or she wears her bald head. So she is doing both. She is setting a trend of like having the bald head and like with the red eyebrows and still being considered beautiful. And she is also able to fit the classic beauty trends by wearing wigs whenever she wants. But I've noticed that some people were shaming Doja Cat saying, oh, well, she hates herself and she hates her hair. Well, it's not necessarily that she hates her hair. It's that she understands that her 4C hair is maybe it doesn't fit her particular lifestyle or maybe that big 4C Afro that she was representing. Maybe it didn't fit with her desire to wear a lot of wigs all the time. And it was constantly taking more time to do the wigs or whatever. So I actually don't look down on women who decide to do different things to push their limits and to increase their pretty privilege, whatever that means for them. Because one thing that I've noticed is that every individual has a different standard of beauty. There will always be people who like riding horses. There will always be people who like riding Lamborghinis. There will always be people who feel like the beach is the most beautiful. And then there will always be people like me who feel like a big city and skyscrapers are the most beautiful. So this is why I say you have to decide what your own internalized beauty standard is and don't shame yourself for it, whether you meet that internalized beauty standard or not. Do not shame yourself. And I would say do everything in your power to meet your own personal beauty standard. You can either change your beauty standard to yourself naturally, 
or you can change yourself to fit whatever your beauty standard is. There is no wrong answer and you get to choose whatever that is for you. Like for me personally, my beauty standard for my own body is I want to be as skinny as possible. I'm very tall, I'm five foot nine. I love being very, very slim, like how I was in my early 20s. But the actual popular beauty trend is being very curvy and being, you know, kind of like that Kim Kardashian style of body where it's like you have a big butt and like big boobs and everything. But for me personally, my internalized beauty standard is I really liked how I looked when I was very skinny and tiny. I didn't have to eat as much. I had so much energy. I could wear whatever shirt I want. So when it comes to that, I don't actually follow the most popular trend and that's okay. There will always be someone who likes my body type. And even if there's not, if I like my body type, that's what's the most important. And so you have to decide what you want more. Do you want popularity? Because some women, they do receive validation from being the most popular, you know, kind of fitting whatever's the most trendy at the time. But the only problem is, like I said, trends will eventually change. So I remember back when the whole Paris Hilton body type was very popular or having the blonde hair and blue eyes and being extremely skinny and showing all your bones and stuff, that was super popular. But now it's something different. So just be aware of the beauty standard you are meeting and whether or not you actually want popularity. If you want popularity, that's okay, but just admit that to yourself and accept the fact that you will always be chasing trends. And if you're okay with chasing the trends, then by all means, chase the trends. I see plenty of celebrity women doing this, women like Cardi B. You know, she's anytime a new trend comes out when it comes to her body, she's getting it done. She's getting her boobs done. She's getting her butt done. She's getting cheek fillers. She's getting lip fillers because those are the trends. So for me personally, I'm not willing to chase that many trends because I feel like it's, at some point it's going to look bad. But if that truly makes you feel the happiest, then by all means, who am I to tell you what to do? Anyway, do you have pretty privilege? Is the way that you've been treated in your life, does it reflect anything that I'm saying in this video? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.